Hey everybody, in this video I'll be playing the attack site scenario, which is the first battle from the Hunt for the Golem supplement for the game of Frostgrave. This is the 11th battle overall for my second edition campaign, but you should be able to just jump in right here if you're interested in what this supplement has to offer. Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, tabletop gaming with bricks and blocks and helping to build your gameplay experience. The Hunt for the Golem supplement is a three scenario mini campaign that was originally released as a pre-order reward when the first edition of Frostgrave first came out. Now it can be found in the Frostgrave Folio supplement, which also contains the Cell Sword, Dark Alchemy, Arcane Locations, and the Ravages of Time mini-campaigns. Once I've played all three scenarios for the Hunt for the Golem, I plan to release a review video of the supplement, which will be linked in the description box once it's available. For this entire mini-campaign, I'll be using the same two warbands. These two teams will be investigating some strange deaths, learning about a construct that has gained some form of consciousness, and then they'll try to destroy the homicidal granite golem. So now I'll show you the two warbands and then we'll get to the bricks and blocks of the attack site scenario. For Puxino de la Mocha is a 10th level sigilist and is carrying two scrolls of time walk. He's accompanied by his apprentice, Ryder. They know the spells right scroll, explosive ruin, push, heal, fool's gold, telekinesis, Time Walk, and Mind Control. Their warband is made up of a Barbarian, an Apothecary, an Infantryman, a Man-at-Arms, a Knight, a Treasure Hunter with a Dagger of Plus One Fight, a Demon Hunter, a new Soldier type from the Forgotten Pack supplement, and he has a Crossbow of Plus One Damage, and a Crow Master, a new Soldier type from the Thaw of the Lich Lord supplement. For Puxino is continuing his search in Frostgrave, looking to find the funds he needs to retire and live out his final days in peace and comfort, while Ryder is along for fame and adventure. Zygamore is a 12th level necromancer and is wearing a robe of arrow turning. He's joined by his brother Ethmod. They know the spells Animate Skull, Raise Zombie, Steel Health, Spell Eater, Fleet Feet, Imp, Brew Potion, Telekinesis, Reveal Secret, and Control Construct. Their warband includes a thief, an infantryman, a man at arms, a ranger, a knight with a shield of plus one armor, a barbarian with a ring of plus one armor, a templar with a two handed weapon of fight plus one, and an assassin, a new soldier type from the Forgotten Pax supplement. The brothers are continuing their mission to grow in power and ability so they can one day face off against and defeat their father who gave up his soul to become a lich. This scenario calls for a standard board setup. However, instead of placing treasure tokens, each player places five corpse uh, markers on the board. And essentially players come up to these and uh, figures spend an action to investigate these and it's randomly determined what they will be. Six of them will be treasure tokens, two will be zombies that will attack, one will be a survivor that will join the warband, and one will be some notes about the golem that these warbands are here to investigate. These corpses are from a warband that happened to stumble across this golem, and instead of just simply being killed like they would be from a mindless golem. Uh, these soldiers have been tortured and uh, their bodies strewn about the battlefield in a way that is unfamiliar for a mindless construct. For out of game spells, the necromancers will start with Raise Zombie. This is for Zygamore, he gets that. And next they'll go to Brew Potion. Zygamore will cast this on a 13. He fails, and his brother Ethmod will try with a uh, minus two, which he gets, and he will brew a potion of teleportation. 
Next, Zagamora will attempt to reveal a secret on a 16, which he gets, and then Ethmod will try also, and he fails at that with his minus two. We'll roll to see which wizard chooses their side, and that goes to Zygomora the Necromancer. Taking a look at Zygomora's warband over here, uh, his brother Ethmod is right here with his knight with the shield plus uh, one, the Templar with the two-handed weapon plus one, their barbarian with a ring of plus one armor, and their thief who instead of carrying their horn of destruction is carrying the potion of teleportation that they just brewed. And over here is Zygomor with his new zombie they raised, their men at arms, and then back here they have their infantryman and their ranger who has a potion of invisibility. And Zygomor is wearing a robe of arrow turning to give him some protection against missile weapons. For Puxino over here has set up inside this ruined building and he is carrying two scrolls of time walk. In front of him is his crow master and the crow master's blood crow, their knight, their barbarian. Out here is their apothecary, the apprentice rider, their demon hunter, their man at arms, their infantryman, and down here is their treasure hunter who's carrying that dagger of plus one fight that she found, I think back in their first game in Frostgrave. One strategy that both of these warbands like to employ is the use of telekinesis to move treasure around. However, there are no treasure tokens on the board at the start of this game, so that spell probably won't be getting much use this battle. And then the special rules say that any figure may examine one of these uh, corpse markers, which is kind of interesting because this team has an animal on its team. So normally animals can't pick up treasure, uh, but since these aren't treasure tokens, rules as written, they should be able to examine the bodies to see what they are. If treasure happens to pop up, they still cannot carry the treasure. And the same goes for the golem notes as it says that possession of those is treated just like treasure. But they can at least see if zombies pop up or if they've found the one survivor that will be on the board. Initiative for the first round goes to Zygomor. Zygomor is going to start out by activating with his zombie, and he is going to use Fleet Feet over here on this knight that he can see. He needs a 10, and fails by 7, he'll take 1 point of damage. He is going to move, and then after him, his zombie would end up doing a double move. They're both going to end up over here. Zygomor would end up right there on 6 inches, and then his zombie would have activated moving six inches on a double move right into contact with that corpse. For Puxino over here is going to activate with just the Blood Crow. He is going to start out by sending the Blood Crow. It can actually fly nine inches right up here next to this uh, corpse and then use its second action to investigate. Roll a d20 to find out what it is and a three is one of the treasure tokens that shows up right in front of the crow. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the crow cannot pick that up. For Puxno is then going to attempt to cast push on the crow master to send him towards this corpse. Casting on an eight is successful. This is now a plus 10 attack against plus zero defense for the crow master. Uh, but the Crow Master gets a critical, which means he automatically wins. So his push was blocked, but he still successfully cast it to get experience points, and then he is going to move over by this ladder. Ethmod over here is going to activate with the Thief, the Barbarian, and the Templar. And the Thief is going to start out by running up these stairs up to right here. And from there, he is going to drink his potion of teleportation, and he can see this parapet right behind that corpse. And next turn, he can try to investigate that. Then the barbarian will double move nine inches into contact with this corpse. Next, Ethmod will attempt Fleet Feet on the Templar on a 10 with a minus two. He will empower for two. Then he will move six inches right over here. 
And then the Templar is going to double move 10 and a half inches now, clear up to here. To Ryder's turn over here, he is going to activate with the Man at Arms and he's going to start by attempting to push the Man at Arms uh, through this alleyway down by that wall. Casting on an eight with a minus two. Uh, he failed by six, he will let that fail. On second thought, he will empower that. Now it's a plus 10 attack against plus three defense. And he gets a 19 against uh, 10, so that is successful. 19 against 12 armor is seven inches. The seven inches will shove him way up here by this parapet. And then Ryder will move right over here. Then the man at arms will activate and he can reach this corpse on a single move and then he will investigate. And he finds 10, which is another treasure token and he can immediately pick that up. The scenario states that if it is a treasure token, they may pick it up as a free action. So that's what he'll do. And even though that was off of a corpse right in the center of the board, I don't believe this scenario actually has a central treasure token. Um, so he is just carrying a regular token there. And since he picked up a treasure, we'll roll to see if a monster appears, uh, which it does not, it needs a 10 plus. For the soldier phase, their knight will run up here next to Ethmod, and then their assassin is going to run up right behind him. And on the very back side of the board here, this man at arms is going to run over here next to this corpse. Their infantryman is going to climb this ladder and go across this catwalk on his double move. And then this ranger on his double move can run over here and just barely get to the top of this ladder on his double move of 10 and a half inches. On for Puxino's side of the board, their crow master will double move into contact with this corpse. Their barbarian will double move up here. And then their knight will double move right over to here. Then their demon hunter will run over to the bottom of this ladder, climb it, and he can get right over here on his double move. Then their, then their apothecary will run next to Ryder and use his potion on Ryder, healing five health to him. Then a little further down the board, the treasure hunter will single move into contact with this corpse and she will investigate. And she finds an 18, which is the survivor. So if anyone is able to use a healing spell on him, he will come back as a thug that will join the warband with just five health. And then their infantryman will double move over here in front of Ryder. With no monsters on the board, we will roll initiative for the next round. And that goes to Frapuxino. Frapuxino over here is going to activate with this knight that's right here. And Frapuxino will start out by moving over here six inches. And from right down there, he can see up here to this uh, thief, and he is going to try to push him off that tower. He only needs an eight, which he gets. And this is a plus 10 attack against plus, I guess this is just a plus one defense. Uh, he's got uh, heavy cover up there, but this is not a shooting attack. It's just a regular attack. So plus 10 against plus one. <laughs> That is a critical hit. So that critical hit adding five inches to this uh, movement against his 10 armor, uh, he takes he, he gets pushed 25 inches, uh, which would be well off the side of the board, but it does go at, he goes at an upward angle, and then he would drop down 15 inches, which is a massive 22 points of damage, and he is very dead. I recently made a video declaring my pick for the best sigilous spell, and I'm beginning to think I should have chosen push. Uh, but just a pro tip here, if your opponent has push, don't put them up on a tower where they're easily visible to their wizard. And then their knight is going to double move over here, 
uh, to block this pathway so that no enemies come through here to try to get uh, revenge against Frapuxino. Down here to Zygomora's turn. Uh, he is going to activate with the zombie that's next to him and the man at arms who's just around the corner that he can see. We'll start out by having the zombie check this corpse. And a 16 is a zombie. All right, so I'll stand the corpse up here. Uh, the zombie would be in contact with him, as would this uh, man at arms. And so we'll go ahead and have the man at arms attack with support. So the man at arms is plus five against plus one. And the zombie wins with a 16 against 12 armor. That deals four damage to the man at arms. And then Zygomore down here is going to move around here to right there and attempt to cast Imp right over here. He casts on a 10, which he fails by five. And actually I will have him go ahead and cast that. So this Imp will pop up right down here. More than just barely outside of the three inch range from that infantry man. And then over here to Ryder's turn, he is going to activate by himself and run six inches kind of out in the open. He's going to make sure he stays more than an inch away from this imp. And from there, he is going to attempt to heal this uh, survivor. This warband is not known for successful heal rules, but he needs a seven with a minus two, and he gets it. The rules for this scenario say that if the thug is healed with a spell or a healing potion, uh, he joins them as a normal thug with five health to start with. Now, Ethmod over here will also attempt to cast an Imp spell. He'll cast it kind of right up underneath here, right over here by this knight. Casting on a 10 with a minus 2. Uh, he failed by 3. He'll go ahead and empower that. And this weird no-armed double-faced Imp will show up right here. And then Ethmod is going to run right over here against this wall, but out of sight of that imp. For the Sigilous Soldier phase, they'll start by having this uh, Crow Master here examine this body. And a 16 is another zombie. So this corpse stands up and comes immediately into combat with the Crow Master. Then they'll have their Apothecary Climb up this ladder, and on nine inches, he can get right into contact with that treasure token to pick it up next turn. Then they'll have their new thug double move around here into combat with this imp. Then their treasure carrying men at arms here will run up and also get into combat. On four and a half inches, he can just barely get to him. And then this infantry man, who's kind of hiding out, can get to the imp on a single move. And he will attack with double support. So that makes him a plus seven against plus one. And he gets a critical hit, which just crushes that thing. Next, their blood crow here on a double move can fly 13 inches all the way over here. 13 and a half to get into contact with that so it can search that next turn. And then their Barbarian is going to run up behind this zombie and attack with the support of the Crow Master. So he's a plus six against plus one, and he gets an 18 to 16 with plus two damage against 12 armor, deals six damage, which is just enough to take down that zombie. So it goes down freeing up the crow master to go. And next, the demon hunter here uh, can see that imp that showed up and there is one piece of intervening terrain between the two of them. That makes this a plus two against plus two and another critical hit. Uh, he'd normally deal plus four because it's a magical crossbow, but uh, that is more than enough to take down that imp. So all that the two imps really did was just kind of delay for Puxno's team a little bit here. The Demon Hunter will then use his second action to just reload his crossbow. Their Crow Master will then double move over here up this ladder to right here. 
And then their treasure hunter, not wanting to be too far removed from the rest of their the party, will run over here on a double move to right there. For the necromancer's soldier phase, first uh, Ethmod will stand up because apparently he was taking a nap there. Their barbarian will search this body and he finds a four, which is another treasure token and he will immediately pick that up. We'll see if a monster appears, which it does not. The Barbarian will then take his treasure and run down to the bottom of this ramp, three inches on his half move. I'll remove this body and then this Templar with Fleet Feet. He can run over here and then get halfway up that tree, uh, just barely on his uh, single move. And then he is going to examine this body with his second move. And he finds seven, which is another treasure token. He picks that up and we'll see if a monster appears. Uh, and again, no monsters are showing up. So I'll just keep the treasure uh, up in the tree so I can remember that he is halfway up the tree carrying that. And then their knight is going to run over here behind their Templar to give him some support. He can get to there on a double move. And the assassin will do the same thing on this side of the Templar. And then their infantryman up here. He can't quite get to this corpse on a single move, so he'll double move against that. And the ranger over here will double move over here, right there where he's in contact with that corpse, but uh, hiding behind that parapet still. For the creature phase, uh, down here, this zombie will attack my zombie, I suppose. Zygomore's zombie is supported for plus three against plus one. And uh, they nobody deals damage there. Initiative for the next round goes to Zygomore. Zygomore over here is going to use his first action to uh, move at half speed by climbing up this. And from there, he can see this blood crow up here, and he is going to attempt steal health on the crow. He casts this on a 10, which he gets on a 17 and the uh, crow can attempt to resist that with a will roll. Crows have a whopping plus three will, <laughs> and it gets a 20 and resists that. Well, that would have been kind of cool if the necromancers were able to one-shot that blood crow to stop him from uh, examining that body, but I think that blood crow's kind of turned into an MVP here in this scenario. And next, for Puxino, we'll activate with this barbarian. And he will start out by double moving in front of the knight so he can get a good view. And that's a single move, actually. And then he is going to attempt mind control on the Templar. He casts on a 16 and gets a 13. He will empower that for five. The Templar gets an immediate resistance roll against the target number of 18. He has a plus one and he fails, so he is controlled. Then the Barbarian will just run over here, double moving next to Frapuxino to snap into combat with anyone who comes near his wizard. Ethmod here is then going to attempt Spell Eater on the Mind Control. He casts on a 12 with a minus 2 and fails that horribly. Uh, fails by more than 10, so he takes 2 points of damage. And worse than that, the Templar is still under the influence of that spell, and then he is going to move over here next to the Barbarian out of the way of some of these enemy troopers. Then Ryder down here is going to activate with the Thug, the Infantryman, and the Man at Arms. Their Man at Arms will activate first, running over here on a double move with his treasure token. Then their Infantryman and Thug will both double move over to here. Ryder is then going to attempt push on this infantryman. So that's an eight with a minus two, and uh, he needs to empower that by one to make that successful. This is now a plus 10 attack against plus three defense, and they're able to defend that push. And then Ryder is going to move forward a little bit to uh, stay close enough to do some stuff, but stay out of danger. To the soldier phase, I'm going to start down here 
with having Zygomore's zombie attack the enemy zombie with support. Plus three against plus one. And that is successful with a 14 dealing two points of damage to the zombie. He'll stay in combat. And then the men at arms who is right there will attack with support. He's a plus five against uh, plus one. And he gets a 16 with plus two damage, dealing six more points of damage and taking down that zombie. And I guess that's a man at arms, not an infantryman, so he doesn't deal plus two damage. So still the four points of damage is just enough to take him down. And he is going to single move into combat. Actually, not into combat, just over here, just beyond an inch of that infantryman. Then up here, this ranger is going to check that body. And this is an eight, which is another treasure token. And we'll roll to see if a monster appears. And once again, no monsters. So the corpse becomes a treasure token and then he is going to climb down from there. And uh, he can do a half move over to here. And then their infantryman will check this corpse. The only thing left to find are a treasure token or the golem notes. And that is a treasure token. And we'll see if a monster finally shows up here with the last treasure token. And hey, seven, so that is no monster. So no monsters out of any of the six treasure tokens. So that body gets swapped out for a loot token and then he is going to run three inches on a half move to right there. Their barbarian over here carrying this treasure will double move over to here, four and a half inches. And then their knight here is going to move through this walkway and he is going to just block the barbarian from coming through, not getting close enough for him to snap into combat. And their assassin that's over there in combat with the Templar will choose to do nothing this turn um, so he doesn't end up dying from his own teammate. Then over to Furpuxino's soldiers. Uh, this crow could examine the body, but um, there's a set number of things to be found on corpses, and I know that that will be the golem notes. And the crow is not able to pick those up, so it's going to choose not to examine that body, and instead it is going to fly over here and move into combat with Ethmod. He can do that in a single move, but he will choose not to attack. He will just keep Ethmod busy. Their crow master here, he is going to run over here and climb up next to this body on a double move. He can barely get there. Then over here to this tower, the demon hunter can see this infantryman and he will take a shot at him with one piece of intervening terrain there. This is a plus two shoot against plus four defense with intervening terrain and that is definitely defended. He'll use his second action to reload. Then this treasure carrying apothecary will climb most of the way down this ladder and then drop the rest of the way so as not to take any damage by climbing most of the way down. Then over here, this knight is going to work his way around his teammates and come into contact with the opposing knight and attack. This is a plus four against plus four. And that goes to Zygomor's Knight with a 21 against 13 armor, dealing eight points of damage and wounding the knight. And he will choose to push this knight out of combat an inch. And then over here, they will have their mind-controlled Templar attack this assassin. With the plus one fight weapon, he is a plus five against plus two. And the assassin wins with a 14, dealing two points of damage and poisoning the Templar. And I'd forgotten that Templar is encumbered, so he would have had another minus one to his fight, but that didn't really matter. Uh, the assassin could push out of combat, but even though the Templar is poisoned, which uh, reduces his actions down to one, since he started his activation with two actions, he still, he would have two, so he could move back into combat. Uh, but we'll make a uh, will roll to see if he breaks the mind control. He has a plus one to this, 
Uh, 15, he needs an 18. Then the treasure hunter will run over and get into combat with the assassin. And she will attack with support. So she's a plus 5 against plus 2. And she wins with a 13 against 10 armor. Uh, and that deals 3 points of damage to the assassin. Then she will choose to push herself out of combat. And since once again there are no monsters, we will roll initiative. And that barely goes to Zygamore. Zygamore down here will start out by activating with the ranger, and he will attempt fleet feet on the ranger. He needs a 10, and he gets that. Zygamore will then run over here. He can get to the just down the ladder a little bit, then he will drop to the bottom, taking no damage because he's not too far up. For the ranger, on his he has nine movement, and so double move, he could go 13 and a half, but he goes half because of his uh, loot he's carrying. So he can get to right here on his double move. For Puxino is now going to attempt Fool's Gold on his controlled Templar. He needs a 12, and he gets a 16. With this spell, the target is required to make a will roll, so he gets a plus one, and he gets a five, so he loses control of that treasure. And it can be moved up to four inches as long as it stays in uh, view of Frapuxno, so he is going to move that right behind the treasure hunter so she can try to pick that up in the soldier phase. Frapuxno will then do a six inch move over to here. And then the knight is going to Right, move into combat on his single move since he's wounded. And then the Barbarian will come around behind the knight. And from there, attack with support. So he's a plus 6 against plus 4. And he gets an 18 with plus 2 damage against 14 armor, dealing 6 damage. F mod over here is just barely within 3 inches of this Barbarian. So they'll activate together, and instead of running the Barbarian off the board, he is going to do a 3-inch half move into combat with the uh, Blood Crow, and then he will use his second action to make an encumbered attack. He is supported, so that gives him a plus 5 overall against plus 0. And he gets a 10 against 9, barely beating the Crow. Even with his plus two damage, he doesn't get past the 14 armor of the Blood Crow. However, he can push it out of combat, so that is what he will do, which will then free up Ethmod to go ahead and cast a spell, and he is going to attempt Dispel, or Spell Eater once again on the Templar. On a 12 with a minus two, and he gets a nine, he is going to empower for five to make that work. I can't do math, he only needed to empower that by three, putting him down to six health, and then he will move over here on his move. Over here to Ryder, he is going to come over here, and then cast Telekinesis on that treasure token. He needs a 10 with a minus two, and he gets a two. He failed by eight, but he'll go ahead and empower that, leaving him at six health. He'll move that six inches, which puts it right at his feet. To the Necromancer's soldier phase, this infantryman will start out by running over here and then dropping down right here with his treasure. The man at arms over here will move into combat with the infantryman right there. And he will attack, plus three against plus three. And the Men at Arms wins the 16, dealing 5 points of damage. Then their zombie over here is going to lumber over here 6 inches on a double move, but he can't quite get into combat. Right down there. And then their Poisoned Templar is going to run over here to get into combat with the Treasure Hunter. And then their Assassin can double move around here into combat with Ryder. Over here, underneath this uh, walkway, the Necromancer's Knight will attack Frapuxino's Knight. Frapuxino's Knight is supported, but he's wounded, so he's a plus four against plus four. 
And uh, he wins with a 16 against 14 armor, dealing 2 points of damage. And that does leave the Necromancer's Knight wounded with 4 health. To Frapuxino's soldiers, uh, this uh, Crowmaster up here is going to search this body and find the Golem Notes. And uh, it says they're picked up just like a treasure token in this scenario, so he would automatically gain control of that. But it also says that uh, they're not encumbered by that. So then he has his six inches to move. He'll climb down here and then drop down right onto this uh, demon's body down here. And this looks like it could be notes about a golem built out of bricks. We'll jump over here to this thug's turn. Uh, he is going to come over here and attack this assassin with support of Ryder. That makes him a plus four against plus two. And he gets a 16, dealing six more points of damage to that assassin. And the assassin is now wounded with three health remaining. And the thug will just choose to uh, stay in combat there. Over here, the infantryman will choose to just do nothing for his activation to tie up that man at arms. And over here, the treasure hunter will choose to do the same thing to keep that Templar at bay. Over here, their demon hunter is going to start to move towards the action to help maybe get that treasure token off the board. He will run over here and hop down six inches. And then over here, this encumbered apothecary can move uh, four and a half inches on his uh, double move over to right here. And then we'll roll up some initiative for the next round. And that goes to the sigilists. For Puxino, will activate by himself, and he is going to attempt to use Time Walk. He casts on 18. Uh, he gets a 16. He could either empower that or use a scroll to make that work. He'll just go ahead and empower that for two. So that will give him a bonus action in the Apprentice phase and then also in the Soldier phase, and then he is going to single move six inches down here. Then Zygamore down here is going to activate with this ranger. He's going to start by sending the ranger off the board with this uh, treasure token, securing the first treasure of the game. And then he is going to do a single move down here by this wall. And then from there, he can see right down here up by that wall, and he is going to attempt Imp. Casting on a 10, he gets that. And just to declutter the battlefield a little bit, we will use this imp here. And it appears right down there, just beyond three inches from that man at arms, but kind of blocking his path from getting through there. And right in the middle of the board, Ryder will activate with this thug. And also this infantryman is just barely within three inches. So he'll start with having the infantryman attack the man at arms. And this is a plus three against plus three. And the Men at Arms wins with a 17 against 11 armor, dealing 6 damage. He only had 5 health remaining, so he goes down, which isn't good for Ryder's team. Uh, next, Ryder will have this Thug attack this Assassin. With support, the Thug is a plus 4 against plus 2, and he gets a critical hit. That Assassin was actually wounded, so he should have had plus 0 fight. Uh, he takes 19 points of damage going down. And then this thug is going to run over to right here to just kind of block this path behind Ryder. And then Ryder is going to attempt telekinesis on that treasure token. He needs a 10 with a minus two. He gets a six. He will empower that for four. So he will move that token six inches that way and then he'll also move six inches that way. So the token would move first, and then he would do his action to move. Uh, now he is uh, wounded after that empowerment, but since he started his activation with two actions, he still gets that second action. And then for Puxino can activate uh, during this phase because of time walk, and he is going to attempt to push this man at arms to the edge uh, so that he can then get off the board before that imp has a chance to get to him. He needs an eight for push, which he gets. So this is a plus 10 against just plus two since he's encumbered. 
and that's an 18 to 13, so that, that pushes him seven inches. And seven inches actually gets him right to the edge of the board. And for Puxino gets just that one action, not a full activation uh, right now. Ethmod up here is going to activate with the Barbarian, and he is going to use Fleet Feet on the Barbarian on a 10 with a minus two, and he gets that. Ethmod will then run off the board, and this Barbarian, now with Fleet Feet, even though he's half moved, he can move six inches on a double move, which gets him off the board, securing another treasure. For Frapuxino's soldier phase, this Crowmaster is going to double move off the board with this uh, Golem Note. Uh, it does not encumber the figure, so he can still move at full rate off of there. And then to get some other figures off the board, this Apothecary will run off the board with this treasure, and this Man at Arms will do the same. Next, for Puxino, we'll use his action he gets during the Soldier phase to use Heal on Rider. He needs a 7, failure by 4. He'll go ahead and empower that, bringing him down to 8, but that will bring Rider up to 7 so that he's no longer wounded. And then this Demon Hunter will activate and he will walk right over here. And from there he will fire his crossbow at that imp right there. That's a plus two shoot against the imp's plus two because of hasty shot. And that is a 20 which uh, deals plus four damage and that thing is very dead. So the imp goes down and then over here we're going to have this uh, Blood Crow actually double move into combat with this Templar and then the Treasure Hunter will attack with support. With support and her dagger of plus one fight she's a plus six against plus four but she loses and that's actually a plus five because of the magical weapon and plus two damage. So she takes seven points of damage bringing her down to five. The Templar will push her out of combat and then instead of running back into combat, she is going to run seven inches over here as for Puxino's team starts their retreat. And then we'll go over here to this melee and the Barbarian will attack with support. He's a plus six and the Wounded Knight is only a plus two. And he gets a 20 dealing six plus two points of damage. That Knight goes down. So with that knight falling, the Barbarian will then run six inches over to here. And then their knight over here, uh, who is wounded, can move five inches. He's going to try to get off this side of the board. For the Necromancer's soldiers, the Templar is going to go ahead and attack that crow. Plus five against plus zero. And he gets a 12 plus Two damage is 14, which once again does not get past the creature's armor. He'll just go ahead and push out of combat, push the crow out of combat. And the Templar is poisoned, so uh, he cannot make a second action. This uh, infantryman over here with the treasure can double move to right about here. And then over here, instead of trying to get into combat, this man at arms and this zombie are both going to run over toward their wizard and end their turn right there. And at this point, I'll just go ahead and call the game. Zygomore would be able to escape with uh, his two soldiers there at the start of this next turn. Ryder would be able to pick up that treasure to essentially secure it. And then this infantryman would run off the board with that treasure. And with that, that would end the game because they'd have no more figures on the board. So we will go ahead and do after game uh, wrap up. For survival rolls for, for Puxino's team, they only lost one soldier and he is just fine. For after game spells, for Puxino will attempt uh, write scroll on a 12. He has a plus one to this because of the scriptorium and fails, and Ryder, essentially a negative one, and he fails at it as well. For experience points, this battle awards a bonus 30 experience points to whichever team acquires the 
golem notes and a bonus 20 experience points to the team that occupies the battlefield at the end of the battle. And they also cast a whopping 12 spells. They took down four uncontrolled creatures and they acquired three treasure tokens. So altogether they got 350 experience points, which maxes out at 300. They've increased their level from 10 to 13. They've increased their health by one, lowered the casting number of push down to seven, and they had a grimoire of enchant weapon they've had for a while, and they finally have enough experience points to go ahead and learn that. And we'll roll to see if they find anything with their treasury. A four gives them four gold crowns. And for their three treasure tokens, a lot of these supplements have new treasure tables that you can roll on. You can usually uh, use one of your tokens to roll on that table and your other tokens to roll on the standard table from the core book, but this supplement does not have a new treasure table, so we'll roll uh, three treasures here. With these results, the seven gave 40 gold crowns and two scrolls, and I rolled off camera that those are scrolls of embed enchantment and destroy undead, and then the 14s are both uh, grimoires with no gold crowns, and for those I rolled up grimoires of draining word and elemental ball. For Puxino's game went well, and every spell the sigilist attempted was successfully cast, either naturally or through empowerment. Mind control locked down much of his opponent's charging forces and bought them some time to essentially steal a treasure token from the opposing Templar. The survivor they helped was a welcome addition, landing a critical hit to take down the opposing assassin. Taking advantage of some possible rules lawyering, their blood crow was amazing for investigating fallen bodies, and once that was done, he did a good job at delaying a few different opposing figures and evading their attacks. I recently made a video about my pick for the best sigilist spell, and seeing how well push works for keeping opponents off of raised terrain has made me second guess the choice I made for that video. After the battle, they visited the black market and used 300 gold crowns to purchase gauntlets of strength for their knight. They gave their scroll of destroy undead and their scroll of enchant weapon, which they hope to use after their next battle, to rider. And the grimoires of draining word, which is a sigilist spell, and elemental ball, are both spells that Frapuxino will consider learning after a future battle. Survival rules for Zygomor's team, starting with their thief, he is fine, their assassin, he is fine, and their knight, he is also fine, three 19s, that's interesting. The necromancers have no after game spells they can use, but during the battle they cast eight spells successfully, failed two spells that caused damage, took out one zombie, acquired three treasure tokens and participated in the battle for 255 experience points. And they used that to increase their level to 14 and they raised their fight stat uh, up by one and they lowered the casting cost of Fleet Feet down to nine and they've got uh, 80 experience points left over. With their treasure tokens, since they successfully cast Reveal Secret at the start of the game, I will roll that treasure separately. So for these two treasures, they find a nine, which is 20 gold crowns and a magical weapon or armor, and I rolled up a Ring of Protection, and a 19 is 100 gold crowns and a Grimoire, and I rolled up a Grimoire of Leap. And now for their last treasure token, they get two rolls and they can choose the one they want. So the seven would give me a few gold crowns and let me roll up two scrolls while the 11 would be a magical item. And the magical item sounded more interesting. And then I rolled a boots of speed. Zygomor had a good strategy to get to the scattered corpses quickly, but his plans were foiled by some good spell casting from his opponent. And he was lucky to have spell eater to dispel that mind control spell. However, he was still able to gain a good amount of experience points and loot, and all his fallen soldiers survived with the bizarre triple 19s that were rolled. They gave their new ring of protection to Ethmod, and their boots of speed to their mana arms. After seeing how well his opponent did with their blood crow, Zygomor spent 100 gold crowns on the purchase of a crow roost for their base, which is required to then spend 100 more gold crowns hiring a crow master of his own and the Grimoire of Leap they found will be used soon, I'm sure, to add that powerful spell to their repertoire. Let me know in the comments if you've ever played the Hunt for the Golem campaign. 
And as always, let me know if I got any rules wrong or if you have any questions about my gameplay. Also, feel free to click like or subscribe so you can keep up with all the content that I'm releasing. I want to thank you for watching. I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.